necessarily a good morning if you were rooting heartily for your bird yesterday in Las Vegas. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. There are probably some Eagle fans that are ready to sign on to. Yes, the Eagles can just stay in Vegas. Don't come home after that effort against the Raiders yesterday. Yeah, we'll talk about it for the next two hours. We would be Jody McDonald along with my co-host today. He's the best off the bench guy in the business. Jeff Kerr, CBS Sports, in for uh, John McMullen, who, as we understand it, is winging his way back. He decided not to stay in Vegas. Maybe he was tempted to, uh, but he's on the flight right now, coming back to the East Coast. The Eagles were on the flight last night on their way home after the beatdown that they suffered at the hands of the Raiders. I hope they were hanging their heads. Do you think they were, Jeff Kerr? (laughs) I'll tell you what, Jody. I kind of want to process yesterday's game out of my mind because that team, honestly, I think for the first time all year, they kind of had the feeling of the fans. Uh, Jason Kelsey showed it multiple times during that game. Frustrated, upset. Where's this thing going? It's, you know, you saw Jason Kelsey shake his head after one bubble screen yesterday. It was just, it was an embarrassment. It, it, I can't believe this team the, the way they are. And the, the crazy thing is, Jody, they – I going into this game, I thought maybe the Eagles were the third best team in the NFC East. After watching the Giants play in the 1 o'clock game against a Carolina team who really isn't that good, if, you know, all things considered, they may be the worst team in the NFC East. And Eagles may get two top five draft picks out of this year. Uh, I guess that's the only solace we can have in this season. I uh, do want to break down every aspect of yesterday's 33-22 loss – which, by the way, my Friday prediction here on uh, Birds 365 was for the Raiders to score 33 points, which is kind of an odd number, and I just kind of put it there, and I was surprised I hit that one. Unfortunately, I had the Eagles scoring 24, so uh, a little bit more than I that they were able to achieve offensively. I gave them too much credit. Um, they, just a failure across the board. Uh, but I do want to start here. If you want to uh, beat up on Nick Sirianni, oh, you can. Uh, The onside kick, some people are genuinely second-guessing. I didn't have a problem with it. The accept of the penalty on third down, on fourth down, to push him back and make it fourth and uh, third and 13 rather than fourth and three, it's just uh, head-scratching, and you can't even begin to comprehend it, and that's... At the time, I'm going, what the hell is he doing? Not second-guessing after the fact when they complete a 30-yard pass. Um, uh, the fact that he ran the ball, but then he went away from it and he came back to it, and the play calling was, once again, very questionable. Um, I'll beat up on Nick Sirianni as much as anybody else today. Jalen Hurts, again, in woefully inconsistent, made some nice plays, ran the ball, gutsy guy, was under siege yesterday with the offense. The offense just didn't get the job done. That's all in the rearview mirror as far as I'm concerned as compared to this defense. This defense is terrible. It's just flat-out terrible. And Jonathan Gannon may have been thought of as a highly respected, ooh, future head coach. Give him the chance once you put him in place. Watch this guy go from here. And right now, this defense has no clue. They might not have enough talent. I don't think Cowie Roseman and the Eagles as an organization have ever emphasized linebackers as much as they should. But this system is failing miserably. The whole will just let them dink and dunk us to death and go all the way down the field and stick it in the end zone. The whole bend but not break. Well, they bend all the way to breaking by allowing the other team to do what it wants. The bigger problem right now, believe it or not, Eagle fans, is not Nick Sirianni and his play calling, not Jalen Hurts and his questionable quarterback play. No, the defense. You can't win with a defense like this, Jeff Kerr. No, you can't. And this is what upsets me the most, Jody. I, I did some numbers crunching last night. Ruben Frank had a really good dive of it. He went a little further than I did. But Dak Prescott completed over 80% of his passes. Patrick Mahomes, 80% of his passes. Tom Brady, over 80% of his passes. Derek Carr, 90% of his passes. What is Jonathan Gannon doing? He does know these guys are good quarterbacks, right? And you don't even try to blitz them. You don't even try to get them – get them off their spots. No, you know, let's just rush four and we'll we'll just leave the the middle of the field wide open because we're playing too deep. And I just don't understand what what they're trying to do here. We don't want to give up big plays. Well, you gave up big plays yesterday. I I don't understand this defensive coordinator and 
I, I actually had a fan say this to me on Twitter, and I, I don't agree with too many fans, but I, I agree with this one. He goes, is it possible Jim Schwartz had lesser talent than this guy does, and Jim Schwartz maximized what he had, and Jonathan Gannon actually has decent talent on this roster and just doesn't know what to do with it outside of the linebackers. Now, he, he did make that point clear, but he has a front four. I, again, they don't have Brandon Grant, but – Derek Barnett, he has as many sacks as you and I do, Jody. Josh Sweat had a quarterback hit yesterday, but he was pretty much invincible. We know what Fletcher Cox said yesterday. Javon Hargrave had a quarterback hit. He actually had a decent game. But Darius Slay's pretty good. He's had a pretty good year. Steve Nelson's been okay. He's had a, you know, for what he's worth. Like, I don't think Marcus Epps has been bad. I don't think Rodney Plaud's been terrible. I don't think Anthony Harris has been terrible. So what's the problem? It, it just can't be the linebackers. This defensive coordinator – I, I don't know. Sometimes I, I just feel like he thinks he's the smartest guy in the room, but yet opposing quarterbacks and opposing offensive coordinators are laughing at him. They are, as of right now. You mentioned <clears throat> our buddy Ruben Frank. Uh, I need to quote this uh, statistical line that he put in his column today. Uh, in the history of the Philadelphia Eagles prior to this year, they had played 1,285 games over the entire history of the Philadelphia Eagles. In those 1,285 games, they had eight times allowed a quarterback to complete 80% of his passes. Only eight times in 1,285 games had they let a QB complete 80% of his passes. In the last five games this year, the Philadelphia Eagles have allowed the uh, opposing quarterback to throw for 80% or more four times. Four in five games as compared to eight in 1,258. How do you be, how can you be that bad? I know the game has changed. I know the rules have changed. I know the way it's legislated has changed. But that's just almost unfathomable that you could allow another quarterback to have open rank, to have open wide receiver, to live in the football, no pressure. They just made almost every quarterback they play look like an MVP candidate. That's awful. I'm sorry, Jonathan Gannon. I know I got on his case a couple weeks ago when he had, well, we have no system. Well, no no kidding. Um, but then he explained it thereafter. I didn't mean we have no system. I mean, I just don't want to be hemmed into calling just one system. I want to stay fluid. I want to stay optional. I don't care how he explains it anymore. All you have to do is throw in the videotape and watch how easily the other team moves the ball down the field. Oh, hey, no big chunks. They're not getting beat for 50-yard touchdowns. Whoopee. Uh, the team just takes three plays rather than one play to get it 50 yards and get it into the end zone. This defense right now, I, I don't know where to start with it, Jeff Kirk, because you're right. Uh, the, the defensive backs are supposed to be good, but they're not coming up and making any plays. They're tackling afterwards, which isn't doing anything good as they move the chains. The defensive line, which was supposed to be a strength coming into the year, and I know they lost Brandon Graham, which is a big loss, but they're getting no pressure on the quarterback. This system is failing all over the place. And here's the other thing I would like to point out. I know the Eagles don't have good linebackers, but I'll say this. Alex Singleton is not as bad as he's been this year. I mean, he found a way to be semi-productive last year under Jim Schwartz. So what's the problem here? You know, Davion Taylor, Yeah, you can have all the 4-4 speed you want. The Raiders were just picking him apart yesterday. Uh, TJ Edwards, they gave a shot at starting yesterday. Again, good backup linebacker, but, you know, I don't think these guys are as bad as they make them out to be, or, you know, or Jean Vigan makes them out to be. I just don't understand what this guy is trying to do right now. Oh, yeah, like you said, Jody, we're not giving up the big plays. Well, no, but you're just letting teams dink and dunk their way down the field. How many 90 yard drives have the Eagles given up this year? It's bad. They just – and, you know, John McGann's probably looking at, well, we only gave up 33. Yeah, because the Raiders t turned the gas pedal off, you know, pretty much when it was 30 to 7. That, that's the final score I, I view this as. It was 30 to 7. It wasn't 33 to 22 or whatever. The rest was garbage time. It was th – that 30 to 7 game signified – who the Eagles were on the offensive side of the ball, the defensive side of the ball. And I never thought I'd say this in most of my lifetime. I don't think the Eagles, even in the Ray Rhodes era, when the Eagles had a bad offensive line, I wouldn't even say this. The Eagles were just dominated in the trenches yesterday. Absolutely dominated. The Raiders offensive line got so much push. 
on that defensive front. I never thought I'd see that. And Yon Nagakwe and Max Crosby, they, they made fools out of Jordan Mulata and Lane Johnson yesterday. That was the worst I've ever seen a, a pair of bookend uh, tackles play for the Eagles, probably since Winston Justice gave up all those sacks um, to Michael Strahan and um, OCU Minura years ago. And then Gakwe was a guy who had become a persona non grata in the league. He was so highly thought of coming out of Jacksonville and then uh, to two different teams in between traded in the middle of the season. It was a big disappointment. He looked like that star in Jacksonville yesterday against the Eagles defense and most of it against Jordan Mailata, which, by the way, and I do want to get back to the defense here in just a second. Uh, I, I, I don't know if it was a day that you and I were together. I know it was a day at least once, because I went to it about three or four times over the last uh, week um, with John in the Eagles revamping with the offensive line when Lane Johnson needed some downtime to get his head screwed on straight. Uh, I did not like the move of Jordan Mailata to right tackle. He's capable of doing it, which says something for Jordan Mailata, um, but they decided to do that the first week. They had Driscoll out there, and he was perfectly fine filling in for Lane Johnson. I thought they should have stuck with that um, and not moved Jordan Mailata from one side to the other. They decided to go there. Yes, uh, Dillard went in and played well for a game, but then he started to show he's Andre Dillard again. Uh, and now they moved Mailata back because Lay Johnson's back. He looked lost back at left tackle. I don't know if he's still got the knee injury, if he's not 100%, but he was getting beat like a, uh, a rug yesterday, as you pointed out. They, they mishandled that. If you've got Jordan Mailata at left tackle and you paid him the money with his new contract extension and you think he's going to be there for the next umpteen years, just leave him there. Herbig's not the, the worst thing in the world to be plugging in at a guard position. And I thought Driscoll had done well enough outside phone and for Lane Johnson. I just think that was a miscalculation. Now, I know I'm calling Stoutland on the carpet and he's the Eagles' best assistant coach and what do i know about offensive lines as compared to jeff stoutland well here's what i know my lot of stunk yesterday he was terrible back at his normal position where you open him for the next five years uh, yeah uh, 2020 hindsight i would love to say that but it's not even because i questioned it before it ever happened so sorry if i i, I seem like a know-it-all that i know more than jeff stoutland well, maybe in this one situation i do well here's my thought process on it the only reason I think they even moved Jordan Mala out of the right tackle was so they could showcase Andre Dillard to teams with trade deadline coming in eight days. And now the Eagles reportedly are seeking a day two draft pick for Andre Dillard. So Andre Dillard clearly isn't part of the future. And I think they wanted to show off, hey, look, this guy can play left tackle in the NFL. Guess what? You don't have one. We got two of them. Well, you know, the old saying, Jody, you know, you know what they used to say when you have two quarterbacks? Well, you don't have any. And, you know, that looked, that looked to be the case yesterday. And Jerry Milan is a lot better than what he played yesterday. I mean, Jan Nagakwe, he's been doing this to – outside last year, he's been doing this to left and right tackles for years. And, you know, it, you have to – you have to protect – what's the word I'm looking for here? You have to contain Max Crosby. You do. Max Crosby is the best – pass rusher in football this year. Has the most pressures, has the most quarterback hits, and I think he has the most sacks. So, but that frees up Young and That free that frees up Clean Farrell, who by the way doesn't play at all in Oakland system anymore. Remember, they drafted him four rounds before Max Crosby. So I'm thinking to myself, oh, okay, one of these guys, they're gonna get theirs at some point today. And I was shocked it was Nagakwe just because Jalen Hurts never goes to his left. He never does. He always goes to his right and I thought it would free up Crosby a bit, but Nagakwe just went right by Milana and Hurts was out of the pocket before he even got the ball, it, it felt like. It was, I mean, Jalen Hurts must have been seeing Ghost in Nagakwe yesterday because Milana just couldn't get his feet set. When Nagakwe bull rushed him, he couldn't contain, you know, he couldn't contain him. Nagakwe would just do that quick move on the outside. Milana was beat. I mean, this was Jordan Milana's worst game as a professional athlete, uh, no doubt. And Lane Johnson wasn't much better. And I noticed it right away in the first quarter. I'm like, okay, like this team really needs Miles Sanders right now. And unfortunately, Miles Sanders was out. And I think Nick, you know, it, it was so weird how he abandoned the run, but I think you could understand why when you saw Kenny Gainwell make carries. And I thought Boston Scott should have been in getting those carries because he got 10 to 15 carries when he was filling in for Miles Sanders in, in the previous few years under Doug. And he wasn't really doing much either. So I guess Sarah I was stuck between a rock and a hard place with what he was dealing with yesterday. 
And again, there's some critics out there, Jalen Hurts, and I'm, I guess I'm one of them because I'm readily admitting he hasn't been consistent th- enough, but you can't knock him yesterday for just taking off and running for his life. Because as you just laid out there, the defensive line was in the backfield in about a second and a half. They just didn't have time to have any kind of plays develop. I think that's why, again, Devontae Smith did not have a big game. Now, again, Jalen had some passes that I thought were poorly thrown to Smith that they judged as Smith drops, which I didn't really see. You had to be an acrobat to be able to catch some of those balls that Jalen threw him, and uh, Smith just wasn't up to that task. But two second, boom, there's a guy in his face. I know that he knows that he can make plays with his legs, but I'm sorry. Any quarterback under the pressure that he was under yesterday would have to react in some way. Moving right, moving left, he still could step up in the pocket a little bit more often than he does for me, but that's uh, a minor criticism. He was running for his life yesterday. The offensive line, which was supposed to be a strength of the Philadelphia Eagles, as of right now, even with the return of Lane Johnson, is a stone-cold weakness. They are absolutely missing their uh, both of their starting guards badly. Right now, offensive line, not his strength. And it's a, even with Lane Johnson, a weakness for the Philadelphia Eagles. It, it's a major weakness, Drew. I, I mean, Nick Sarah was asked, I think it was Friday, you know, what's the status of Brandon Brooks? It doesn't look like he's coming back anytime soon. And I, I, I'll be honest at this point, like, I don't really care. It's one of those, you kind of just got to move veterans at this point. And I'm not talking about the trade that line. I'm talking. I'm thinking after the season, it is time for a full-on rebuild of this football team. This team got old quick. They they aren't coached well. We know – I don't even have to go into Howie Roseman. I could have a 10-hour show on all the mistakes Howie Roseman has made this offseason, yet alone in his 10-year career. So, I'm thinking to myself, can you imagine if the Eagles had, like, a pocket quarterback back there, say, a Tom Brady or a Ben Roethlisberger – they would have gotten sacked 10 times yesterday because there's no way they're running. Out. Like, I thought Jalen Hurts did the best of what he had to deal with. And like you said, Joe, the guy was just running for his life yesterday. It was so hard to evaluate the kid. I'm like, I can't even evaluate this guy because he's already taken off. He has to do what he can. And, you know, he had a couple – I mean, the game was out of hand. He had a couple nice throws at the end of the game. But you're right, just inconsistency all around and – you know, he was, I think at one point he was like six of 13, six of 14. And like I said to myself, well, you know, this guy isn't good enough yet to kind of withstand that. And I was just like, well, at least he's not getting sacked. At least he's not getting hurt. The one play I did think he got hurt, but you imagine Joe Flacco was back there yesterday, how bad it would have been. It would have been an absolute disaster. The Eagles were fortunate they had a running quarterback like Jalen Hurts yesterday because it would have been even uglier than what it was. All right, I'm going to play devil's advocate here for a second. And the power of positivity, as a matter of fact. Howie Roseman, yeah, not looking good. The draft from last year, uh, the key free agent signings, Kerrigan, which I liked, uh, not good. Some of the things blowing up in Howie's face big time. However, he did get his hands on that Miami Dolphin first round pick, which as of right now is number two in the draft if the season were to end. And we'll uh, kick this around for the next 10 weeks into where, where we actually find out where it's slotted. But it is looking like a damn good trade. Uh, so you got to give them at least that much. And the Eagles are two and five. And they look terrible. And Jeff Carr has already said today, the Giants may have moved past him. In his, and Jeff Carr beats the snot out of the Giants every chance he gets, both under his column and here on Birds 365. Had to admit, yeah, they look pretty good beating up on – they beat the Panthers a hell of a lot easier than the Eagles beat the Panthers. Very true. Uh, Here's the good news, folks. The Lions are coming next week. Oh, It's it's kind of good news, bad news. It's a winnable game. It's absolutely a winnable game. I know it's on the road, but the Lions find a way to lose week in and week out. I'm not one of these who buys it. Yeah, but they play tough. They play good opponents, and they hang in there. And they're in the Rams yesterday until the uh, second half of the fourth quarter of the game hung in the back. They lose every week. They're a poorly coached football team. Sorry, Deuce fans. He's part of that. The, the fact that they're always in games and end up blowing them in the second half tells me that they've got some talent. But the coaching staff, when pushed over the course of 60 minutes, don't do enough to help their players win. So next week is a winnable game. That's the good news. Here's the bad news. If they lose next week to the Lions, 
Oh, my God. You think the Eagles have hit rock bottom now after this beatdown in Vegas against the Raiders? Oh, no, 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 no. They're going into Detroit next week. And if the Lions get their first win of the season against the Eagles, Jeff Curry and I will be here next Monday night, uh, next Monday morning. And damn, then it'll really get ugly. All right, speaking of ugly, no, I I can do that because he's my buddy. He's my pal. Uh, Coming up next, we've got Brandon Lee Gowden from Bleeding Green Nation. He will share in our ugliness. Ugly Jody McDonald, ugly Jeff Kerr, ugly Brandon Lee Grant. Why we're just describing the Eagles and how they played yesterday. Sorry, we can't get around it. It's pretty damn ugly. We'll come back with Brandon Lee Gowden next here on Bleeding, on uh, Birds 365. 